Okay, uh, good morning again to everybody. Um, you might have seen a this notification pop up in your screen. Well, it's just uh, just telling you that we are recording this uh, this this webinar. Okay, so to get started, I'd just like to uh, introduce myself. My name is Aldred Boyd. Uh, I've been in, I'm an industry specialist for the Autodesk manufacturing products. So what this is is you know the AutoCAD plant, AutoCAD PNID, AutoCAD mechanical, um, AutoCAD electrical. I my my main focus is on the Inventor uh, products. So so those kind of manufacturing and everything that ties into Inventor as well. So you've got your Inventor Nastran, uh, Inventor nesting, um, and your Inventor cam as well. So for your your two and a half to five axis milling and turning. Uh, I've just got just under 20 years of experience. I've been in this game for, for quite a long time. Um, my, you know, I started off on AutoCAD, um, and then from there I've just kind of, you know, sort of increased my knowledge on uh, on the AutoCAD side. So with AutoCAD mechanical, electrical, and and the plant. Um, I am both AutoCAD and Inventor certified. Um, so I've taken my exams for that. I've taken quite a few exams for that over the last couple of years. Uh, and I'm also an Autodesk certified instructor. So uh, if you do, you know, happen to come for training uh, for any of Micrographics, um, you know, sort of training sessions, uh, we are all Autodesk certified. So we've also taken exams uh, to qualify for that. Um, just just a couple of things. Just If you do have any questions that you can think of uh, during the session, then just uh, just type it out in the notes at the bottom. Um, and then we can discuss it right at the end when we do the uh, we do the the question and answer session. Okay, so the agenda for today, um, you know, so AutoCAD with specialized tool sets. Some of you might have bought AutoCAD in the last couple of years, um, and what Autodesk has done is actually kind of as a what's new, they've included those specialized tool sets in that. So firstly, I'm just going to break down those specialized tool sets so that we can understand. Uh, what actually goes in each one of them? Um, I know a lot of you, or well, a lot of people, have been, you know, you know, sort of just using AutoCAD as is. You know, they've got all these other fantastic tool sets that Autodesk has given them, but they've never really you know, taken a look at it and and gone into more depth of it. So we're going to break down the specialized tool sets so that you can get a better idea um, of what's actually included in that, what you're going to be getting out of it. And then um, I'm just going to go through the what's new with the AutoCAD with specialized tool sets. So we'll just see what's new, uh, you know, with AutoCAD 2021. Okay, so these are the specialized tool sets or verticals, as I like to call them. So we've got your AutoCAD mechanical, architecture, electrical, map 3D, MEP, plant 3D, raster design. And about four or five years ago, they reintroduced AutoCAD for Mac as well. So that AutoCAD for PC, I like to call the, the vanilla AutoCAD. Um, and the AutoCAD for Mac, we just call AutoCAD for Mac. Okay, so this is just a, a little bit of a, a graph, an info, infograph on, on how everything gets connected. So at the top over there, you can see you've got your, your vanilla AutoCAD uh, for PC or Mac. Um, just the, the AutoCAD specialized tool sets do not, they're, they're not compatible with Mac. It's just the AutoCAD, uh, the base AutoCAD that you've got over there. Um, but there again, you can see there you've got the toolbox in the middle, and then you've got you know how it relates to your mechanical architecture, electrical, map 3D, MEP, raster design, and your plant. And at the top left and top right, you'll see there's two other um, sort of apps that that they've been developing. So you've got your AutoCAD mobile app, and you've got your AutoCAD web app as well. And I'll be discussing a little bit of that a little bit later in the in the presentation. Okay, so first up, we've got AutoCAD architecture. So for all the architects out there, if you have been using, uh, you know, sort of AutoCAD in an architectural sense of the word, you know, you've been doing your your, your 2D plans, uh, your section views, um, you know, sort of inserting doors and windows as blocks, doing all your elevations. Now, what AutoCAD architecture allows us to do is sort of do all of that, but automate the whole process. So there's no different way that you can be drawing as if you were drawing in the normal AutoCAD, where you know you're just drawing in 2D. But what you do in the background, you actually set up 
um, say for instance your walls, you know, you say your wall needs to be a 270 mil cavity wall with an airspace or cavity in the middle. Um, and you also set how it's going to look at when you look at an elevation, um, or sorry, a plan view. Uh, then, you know, you'll say when you're drawing it in 2D and giving it all its dimensions, it actually in 3D is already building up that 3D wall because you've set it up that maybe it has to run from your foundation to the first level, second level or third level. And you've also specified what those levels are. So if any of you have used Revit before, uh, it's very, very much, very, very much like Revit. So it's kind of like a predecessor to Revit, but based on the AutoCAD architecture. The nice thing about AutoCAD architecture, it realizes that, you know, in normal AutoCAD, a door block is just once again lines, arcs, and circles, or you know, a window. So that if you do bring it into a planned view, you still got to go, you know, trim off or split where the wall is. And if you move that block left or right then you're going to have to move that gap left or right as well. Um, you know, if you had to draw a, a, a house in 3D in normal AutoCAD, you know, to draw the wall, you know, you draw your, your polylines, then you extrude it or press pull the wall up, and then you have to actually cut out the size of the door or the window and where it's going to be positioned, draw up your, your 3D door or wall, and actually place it in. If that gap or the wall needs to move, you have to do it in two separate instances, or you have to move the door and then recut out the wall and fill in the gap on the other side. Whereas in AutoCAD architecture, it recognizes that a door, when it interacts with a wall, needs to be cut out automatically. So if you do move that door, uh, both either in your elevation or your plan view, it's going to move that cutout of the wall um, in respect to that over there as well. Um, it has got a big library of you know walls, doors, and windows as well. Um, and you know, creating sections is also very, very easy. You know, once again, it's just a section line. Uh, that section line is is automated. Um, so it, it automatically creates the section view. And if you move that section line, it will then go and update the section view as well. So you know, if you do have um, a you know you know a client who who really wants to see a lot of stuff and and you need to get all those sections out you know they change their mind every so now and again or it's a very very big building and you actually have to do it as per the plan views then that'll be very very easy to be able to get out um, and create okay then you've got your AutoCAD MEP um, and this is for for the engineers so this kind of goes hand in hand with AutoCAD architecture uh, so MEP stands for your mechanical E stands for electrical and the P stands for plumbing so with your mechanical, you can go put in all your ducting and set up all your ducting systems. Um, this can be in, in conjunction with your um, your architectural model as well, coming from AutoCAD architecture. So, you know, because it's all working on the AutoCAD platform, you're now able to XREF everything, you know, you know, all your different drawings into one another for references so that, you know, that when you are doing that ducting, it's not going to go through a wall or, you know, you need to know that you have to cut out the wall because the ducting needs to go through it to the next room. Your electrical systems, okay, so you can work out your, your lighting systems and your loads as well, um, and then be able to get your electrical, your 2D electrical uh, sort of drawing for the rooms or the, the floor or whatever you're working on over there. And then for your plumbing, your hot and cold water systems, um, you know, you can put your plumbing into the toilets and the basins and everything like that. And once again, AutoCAD MEP works in conjunction with all, you know, with your AutoCAD architecture as well. So, um, it's kind of, like I said, the predecessor to Revit. You know, Revit does it all as well. So AutoCAD will do this as well um, uh, for you. Okay, then on to the mechanical stuff. So AutoCAD mechanical. Uh, if you've worked with Invent or any other sort of 3D uh, solid modeling package, um, this is kind of like a, a 2D version of that. Um, you are able to go in and create 2D objects or blocks and you know, say for instance, you've got a front view, a side view, and a top view of a part. You can go name them, say part A, front view, part A, side view, part A, top view, and you know, go and pull out a bill of materials. Now, normally when you're working in AutoCAD, you know, you've got attributes, and when you pull a data extraction, if you uh, if you know about that, then you know it will go actually say that there's three parts in there. But with AutoCAD Mechanical, it's intelligent enough to know that when you create a, a data extraction, or it'll be an actual bill of materials. Um, it knows that that is just one part. It's just different views of it. So you'll actually get the correct amount of, of objects or parts that you've got in your drawing um, with that. 
Um, if you look at the top uh, right hand corner, that, just that picture over there, you'll see there's a display hidden line to use any specified layers for hide situations. This is actually a very nice, powerful function of AutoCAD Mechanical, where um, normally when you've got you know two parts and they're coinciding with each other, you have to show if one's behind and you've got to put in your hidden detail. Now that's concerned, you know, the, the way that you do that normally in AutoCAD is you can have to go split points um, and then you have to go put that split piece of uh, you know AutoCAD line or arc on a different layer. Um, and then, you know, if you do move it, then, you know, it's a whole rigmarole again, and you've got to go make sure that, um, you know, you've got the correct split points, you've got to join, you've got to put another layer. So it's, it's quite a, a tedious um, affair. Now with this, it actually will do that automatically for you. You just say, right, say for instance, you've got um, you know, a circle and a, and, a, and a rectangle. This circle must always be behind this uh, rectangle over here. And as you move the circle into different positions, that uh, updated uh, hidden line, well, that hidden line will update accordingly. Um, like I said, you can create bills of materials um, as well as it has an automated uh, layering system. So you'll create that uh, layering system of what you want. And as you start to create the AutoCAD mechanical components, it'll go put that on the correct layer. When I say the AutoCAD mechanical components, for instance, your dimension lines may be green, and the, the font of the text will be purple um, and a certain font. The um, hidden detail that you've got is pink or it's green or it's dashed or it's dotted, you know, whatever you want over there. But I'll put onto the create the correct layer and you'll see that the, the layer names would be AM underscore and it'll give it a, a name over there. It's also got a very, very big uh, library of components. And I mean, this is something that, you know, you, you don't really want to draw up often. So nuts, bolts. Uh, washers. Uh, you can do bolted connections as well. So if you've drawn up uh, a side view of two plates, uh, you can actually there go and insert a bolted connection. It will, you know, draw lines long enough so that it actually covers both plates uh, with your nut at the top and maybe a washer um, and the, the bolt head at the bottom or, or wherever you've done the design. There's also a little bit of FEA in this as well. So if you need to get things like bending moments um, on a structure, you can draw your structure um, in 2D, so the, the profile of it, it's like a channel, and then you can say what forces are on it, um, how long it is, and it'll give you, um, you know, sort of uh, some FEA or finite element analysis uh, results from that as well. Then we've got AutoCAD Electrical. Now, if you are into electrical schematics, um, then this, this is definitely one of the programs for you. Now, I just want to, the, the difference between AutoCAD Electrical and AutoCAD MEP Electrical is MEP is done for buildings, um, and then electrical is done for your more your manufacturing design. So if you're going to uh, design something that's going to have electrical wiring in it, then you'd use your AutoCAD Electrical for this. So uh, what you can do, the normal way that you work with AutoCAD Electrical um, uh, you know, the normal way you work with electrical products in, in normal AutoCAD is that, you know, you sometimes have one drawing and a whole lot of different title blocks. And uh, what you do is on the first, uh, maybe A3, because that's how big you're gonna, um, your, your drawing pack has to be, the size of the paper, you'll start drawing up all your wires. And these wires won't be intelligent, they'll just be normal um, AutoCAD lines. Then you'll bring in your, your, your blocks, maybe a, um, a terminal or a contact, or relay, and you'll plonk it in over there, and then you'll basically split the line to show where it is. You know, if you once again, if you have to move the the block up or down, maybe it's a pilot light, you have to move it up or down um, to position it. You're gonna have to then go and re-split it, and you know, make sure that all the lines are there's no gaps in the lines where the AutoCAD block was before. Um, once the drawing does get full, if you need to go into another drawing or another title block, uh, then you need to make sure that the tags or you know the that that are connecting the two wires um, are there. Um, and you also have to remember which, which drawing to go to. AutoCAD Electrical does that automatically for you. So, you know, you can just start drawing and when you draw a line, it's actually, it's considered a wire in AutoCAD Electrical. So it has that intelligence. So if you had to go and drop a, a relay into that wire, it will cut it automatically. If you move the relay up and down, it will then move the cutting of that wire up and down as well. Um, it's also got, you know, automatically will diff color code to how thick the, thick the wire is as well, the gauge of the wire. Um, what it does also do is, because it's got much more information than just a block with attributes, you know, once you put in a, an object into AutoCAD Electrical, it will then go and tell you, um, will ask you, please put in the tag information. Uh, please put in the catalog information. And that catalog information is something that is installed 
uh, with AutoCAD Electrical as well. And it's got, you know, like ABB, Allen Bradley, uh, Siemens, um, Tiller, Kamenik. So it's got all of these um, different manufacturer components with their catalog numbers as well um, and their properties. And it's sitting in a database which can be easily edited, um, you know, while you're drawing as well. Um, the AutoCAD Electrical also does panel drawings as well. So once you've done your, your schematic, your 2D schematic, uh, you will then go and draw your, your general assembly on the panel. The nice thing about this is that it is linked. So if you're going to go with putting your, your 2D schematic symbols in your, you know, your, your uh, drawing, um, you can link it up with the tag number to your panel schematic as well. If the tag number changes on either or, it will ask you, listen, look, we've got a relationship to another um, another component or symbol in another drawing. Would you like to go update it now or later? You can update it later if you want to, or you can just go quickly update it, and there we go. No more having to go and find that other drawing, uh, find that component, and make sure that the two tag numbers are the same um, or the catalog information is the same because you know AutoCAD is a very manual process. Uh, just with the consistent project standards uh, with drawings. So, you know, what um, what you can do with this is for each project, you can actually specify what standards you want to use. So maybe company A you're working with just likes telecommunicate, telecommunicate, and the second company just wants Allen Bradley, and the third company only wants Siemens. You can actually specify that in, in an AutoCAD electrical project that those are the symbols or those are the um, the, the the components that you're going to use from that company. So you don't, if you have someone new starting, uh, it's not a case that they can just grab whatever library components they they want. They have to use what you have set up in the system. And once again, just the bottom, you know, includes a library of 65,000 plus intelligent electrical symbols. Okay, and you'll see all the different standards. Uh, so you know, we use IEC, um, and uh, you know, you can use any of those other standards as well uh, from all over the world. Okay, then you've got AutoCAD Plant 3D. Now, AutoCAD Plant 3D comes with two different types of uh, software, AutoCAD PNID and AutoCAD Plant 3D. AutoCAD PNID is the is sort of the 2D version of your, your Plant 3D drawing. Um, so it pro stands for Process and Instrumentation Diagram. Now, what generally happens is the engineer will do the PNID and then they hand it over to, uh, to the draftsman to, to go draw up the, the 3D plant. The way that AutoCAD PNID and AutoCAD plant work together is it's got to check to see that whatever was created in a pipeline with an inline asset, so it's like a pump, or, uh, so like a valve, um, is is also in the 3D model. You know, you don't want to have a set of PNIDs and you know you drop your 3D model, you create your isometric from that, and then what happens is you find out that there's a there's a couple of valves missing. So you can run a a manual search between the two drawings to make sure that um, everything that's in the PNID also coexists in the plant model as well. Now, the plant model doesn't just do uh, your your three D piping. Um, it's also got an equipment, uh, you know, it causes create equipment um, like tanks, pumps, etc., uh, as well as create steel structures. So, with a steel structure, it's it's very simple, um, but it just gives you the idea of the spacing that you need, so that when you are doing your piping, um, you know exactly where to you know where to pipe, so that you don't have anything clashing. Uh, once again, uh, with the the equipment, uh, there's a couple different ways that that guys use plant. So with uh, with equipment, if you manufacture the equipment as well, normally what happens is they'll use Inventor and then ex export that inventor component out as an ADSK file. That ADSK file then can get uh, imported into AutoCAD plant and then put in. Now with the ADSK file also comes all the information of what nozzles are with that tank. So when you do start piping, it'll put the correct flange on with the correct gasket, um, if it needs to be a reducer to go to the pipe, and then it'll start run running that pipe over there. Um, Another great thing is orthographics. So if you need to get a, a sort of a general assembly or a section view of the plant, very, very easy to do that. Um, and you can get a, a report from that as well, a bill of materials uh, from that. So you'll see exactly what is going into your, your plant over there. And then probably the best thing about this is your isometrics. I don't know if you guys do do plants, but, um, do plants, but isometrics can be a bit of a, a tedious affair. 
And if you create your, your plant 3D model correctly, um, you know, creating your isometrics is very, very quick and easy. Uh, you know, if you've got like a thousand pipelines, running that isometric and then just checking it uh, is much easier than having to draw them up uh, manually. So run it, create it, create your drawing pack, and then send it off to the client. Okay, it also does include a lot of intelligent plant objects. Okay, so we do have a, um, a, a spec and uh, catalog editor where you can go and, and create uh, you know, all your, 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 your pipes, um, you know, your bends, your elbows, reducers, and also how pipes interact with each other. So, for instance, if you've got a, a six-inch pipe coming into a four-inch pipe, um, you know, and you know, how does it, how does it uh, connect? Is it a reducer, concentric, eccentric? So you can put all that intelligence into it so that you don't have to go and worry about how things fit together when, when creating an object. You just have to basically say, right, this pipe needs to run from year to year and it needs to fit into this pipe and the fitting or the connection must come in automatically and that is set up with your um, AutoCAD uh, spec and catalog editor. You can run reports with this as well. So you can get, say for instance, a valve report um, or equipment uh, list report uh, and then send that to the relevant people like maybe procurement for, for buying purposes. AutoCAD Map 3D, okay, so if you work with a lot of GIS data, AutoCAD Map 3D is, is the software for you. Um, you know, so you can incorporate your topology with AutoCAD, um, you know, create, maintain, and communicate the mapping and the GIS information within the AutoCAD drawing environment. Um, it's got a lot of tools specifically for your GIS data. So, you know, if there's anything that you, you know, sort of use this, you know, do town planning or, or mapping, anything like that with, you know, all your... Um, you know, wastewater, water, electrical stuff, um, then, then you know, definitely, you know, take a look at AutoCAD Map uh, 3D. It's, it's, it's a great product to use. Um, I think it also works in conjunction with AutoCAD Civil 3D. Okay, so that's not a product we're going to talk about because it's, it's actually sold separately. It's not in the, the specialized tool sets. Okay, um, then we've got AutoCAD Raster Design. So this was created uh, for... You know, guys who were transitioning from from very old school. You know, I used to draw on a, a drawing board, and then you know now we've come into the age of of digital technology with AutoCAD, and and we need to get all those old drawings and we need to digitize them or vectorize them. Um, so AutoCAD Raster Design allows you to take your drawing and and scan it in um, in a bitonal uh, bitonal color, and and then bring it into AutoCAD. Now it's got some nice editing tools like Despeckle, Bias, Mirror. Uh, now Despeckle, for instance, is, you know, when something sits in a room, you know, for a long time, it will obviously collect dust. So, you know, when you scan it in, it's, it's going to have all these little dust speckles. And you can say, well, listen, everything that's smaller than three pixels or whatever, just delete it. It'll run through the drawing and, you know, clean up all, all that, um, that, that's, that dust over there. Um, another nice thing you can do is text, for instance. It can actually recognize text text. Not 100% sometimes, but enough that, you know, you only have to go change a few letters to get the wording that you see on the paper, um, you know, aligning with the wording that you see on your, your vector um, or your, your 2D DWG drawing. And, you know, a lot of these, um, the, the, these tool sets that I'm talking about, they, they might not do 100% of the job. There might be a little bit of manual work, but, you know, you know, we think always to think, you know, like if you can automate 70 to 90% of your job and then that's just 10%, it is sort of manual work. It does cut a lot of time out. And, and as we know, time time is money. Okay. So, so yeah, so AutoCAD Raster Design, bring your drawing in. Uh, you've got some touch up and clean up uh, tools that you can get from there. And then once again, you've got a nice uh, clean DWG that you can use um, uh, in, your, in your design. Okay, and then just the last AutoCAD for PC Mac. Okay, so as I said, you know, AutoCAD, AutoCAD did have a version for Mac many, many, many years ago, and it also used to run on Linux as well, and it was dropped. And then I think about five or six years ago, they brought back the AutoCAD um, for Mac. Um, and I just put a nice little fun infograph down there just to see the different uh, symbols that, uh, that Autodesk has brought out um, on, on what, you know, what signifies AutoCAD. So I don't know where you guys sort of slot in. I think I slotted in about R13, 14, yeah. So that's when I started on my, my AutoCAD journey. And we all know what AutoCAD does do. 
Okay, so now we come on to the the what's new. So um, so everything I've spoken about with the the tool sets is you know it, it is kind of what's new, and it's 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 kind of a what's new from uh, from when they introduced AutoCAD for tool sets. Now I've seen that there hasn't been a lot of sort of a industry focused what's new on AutoCAD. There over the last I think release or two, they have more focused on the base AutoCAD. Um, and they've tried to sort of increase that uh, that capacity over there. Um, so if you guys you know know when drawing you know trim and extending is a big part of of, of the drawing, um, and it sometimes can get very confusing. When I'm training guys, you know you'll say okay right, okay start the start the trim command, then you know get your your boundaries and then press enter, which you know always everyone always seems to forget, and then you know start clicking on uh, what you uh, what you want to get rid of. Now they've changed it a little bit now where they've gotten rid of that first that first function where you have to say, okay, right, boundary edges and then press enter and then start to, to trim. So you can actually just start trimming or extending um, immediately. So for instance, you you know you've you've got a drawing and you know you just press trim and then you start clicking on a line and it'll disappear. A nice thing that they have done is that in the past or in the last version of AutoCAD is if if none of the line got left behind and you were still in the trim command and you were clicking on it, it just says can't trim, can't trim, can't trim. But now what the trim function does will actually delete that piece of line. Okay, so you don't have to leave a piece of that line over for it to, to, to be trimmed. Okay. Um, and, you know, so the default options for selecting the segments to be trimmed or extended are either individual selections, freehand selections, if you just hold down your, your left mouse button for freehand selection, you just drag it through and whatever that line runs through, it will trim through that line over there. And then you've got two point fin selection. Okay, just click between two points and then it will go and uh, delete everything between that fence line over there. So they have made it a little bit easier. Um, in that picture, you can see that the trim also ignores hatches. Okay, so it won't then go, you know, and, and trim to every single hatch line, it will just go trim between the actual lines that you've created. Um, but unfortunately, it doesn't work with extend command, so hopefully they'll put that in uh, once once 2021.1 comes out or maybe 2020.2, or uh, 2022. Okay. If you do not like this method, if you find that it's cumbersome, you know, just go to the trim extend mode and change the system, system variable. Okay, so just type trim extend mode in and just change the system in variable. I think it's up to zero. So it's either on one or two, and then you just put it put on to zero, and then it will change it back to um, change it back to to what you need it to be. Okay, revision cloud enhancements. So how many times have you tried to do a revision cloud, and you know that that little arc is really 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 small, um, and you have to go and change it, click on it, go to properties. So what it does now is it looks at the, the relative size of, of your screen, and then it will resize or scale that arc length according to how big your screen is. Okay, and you can go and change those arc chord lengths through the properties. So there you can see there in the, uh, you select it. And also it's a rev cloud now. Okay, so it's actual rev cloud uh, uh, object. And you'll see the arc length at the bottom, 8176, and you can go change that uh, to whatever you want it to be. Break object to single points. I actually like this, this new function because um, when you go to, to break at a single point, uh, you know, it's, it's, you, if you had to press spacebar, it reverse to break at two points, which are, you know, it's really irritating because wherever you know, that break at single point is, I think it's, you know, under your draw or modify, you click the drop down arrow and then it opens up that bottom window. So, so yeah, so you don't have to go do that anymore. It actually uh, is now repeated by pressing the enter command or spacebar or right click and repeat command. Quick measure. Okay, so they, they, they started uh, or they, they, sort of redid the quick measure tool, I think about I think one or two releases ago, where if you hover um, anywhere in the drawing, it will shoot out a horizontal line, it shoots out a vertical line as well. And whatever that vertical line or horizontal touch, line touches, it'll tell you, um, uh, give you the measurement of it. So if I took a look, look at the picture on the left-hand side over there, the horizontal line running to the right, it's hitting that arc, so it gives me a radius. If it hits a circle, it would give me a diameter. Um, it's also telling me 
um, because hitting a line, the vertical line is hitting that uh, those two lines in the top over there, um, over there and over here. Uh, you'll see that it gives me, um, you know, the lengths of those lines as well. Um, and then it's also giving me a radius on the left-hand side over there. So it's a very quick and easy way to be able to go and see just exactly what you've got in your drawing. So if interrogating drawings which you received from someone else, uh, you can quickly see what you're dealing with and how to tackle the issue that, that you need to, um, uh, you know, while, while doing your part of the drawing. Okay. Then what you can do is if you click um, in an enclosed space, AutoCAD will show you the area and the perimeter. Now, you know, previously what happens, if you want to get the area of something, what would you do? You'd have to go, uh, you know, sort of measure, area, and then you had a couple of options. You had, um, I think, add, um, subtract, um, or area. So you have to first click on area, and then you're going to click on an object. If it was an object, if you made a polyline out of it, and then you just click on, you know, different areas, and it'll give you the cumulative of it. And then if you want to start subtracting areas, then you'd have to make sure that you click on and subtract, and then start clicking on the areas, and then click enter at the end. So it was a very laborious um, and tedious way to go and find areas, or cumulative areas or subtractive areas um, in AutoCAD. Um, yeah, all you'll do is you'll just, you know, go to your quick measure, click on it. If you hold, I think, Control or Shift, and you click on another area, it'll then start adding up areas. So um, very quick and easy, and actually a very nice little addition to uh, to AutoCAD. Okay, blocks, palette enhancements. So um, one thing that Autodesk has been doing over the last couple of years with, with AutoCAD is they've been linking a lot of the functionality with cloud functionality. So what we've got here now is a way to access blocks through Box, Dropbox, or Microsoft OneDrive, but it must be paired with your Autodesk account. Okay, so it won't just work if you aren't, if you, you're not logged into Autodesk account. So, um, so, so basically what happens, you can sync all your local blocks uh, with any of these, these uh, cloud storage providers so that you can go anywhere in the world, um, open up an AutoCAD, you know, log into your Dropbox, Dropbox, or your Microsoft OneDrive, log into your Autodesk account, um, and then you can now start accessing uh, your, your local blocks, which you may have created in Africa, but now you're sitting in uh, Europe somewhere. Okay. So, so that's a very, very nice um, way of, of, uh, of working um, because now you, know, you can go anywhere in the world um, and access those, those drawings and quickly create the drawings that you need to um, with something that you've, uh, with libraries that you've created. XREF compare. Okay, so how many times have you had a situation where you know you you get a, a drawing, um, you get an XREF, you draw, draw, draw. Someone updates the XREF. You're at maybe your revision two. All of a sudden, something doesn't really look right. Now you think, okay, what has actually changed, and what have I done, or what have they done? Where where you need to compare what's happening in both drawings to see where something's gone wrong, or where something you know you know because it doesn't look right. So you can now go, and once again, this has to be linked with Box, Dropbox, or Microsoft OneDrive. Uh, so you have to save it up in those, in those three different uh, platforms where you can actually compare it. And you can compare it through different users. Uh, so if you know that if you're working with four or five different people, you can just compare it with yourself and, and, and uh, maybe user A or user C or user D. Um, you can create do it through the date. So you can actually say, like, right, um, I, need, I need to know on the 25th of May, um, what did my drawing look like? What did my XRF look like? Um, you know, what were the differences? Or you can do it between a specific date. So you, you know, say in this week over here, what were the differences? So it'll list all the different um, XRFs, and then you just click on the XRF that you want, and it will show you um, what was actually in that XRF over there. Okay, so, you know, and, and that's the interface of it. Um, and you can you can see that you can see the differences not in the current XRF, only in the current XRF. There's no differences, not compared, and also draw order as well. Okay. And then is there a cloud display around? Is it rectangular? The size, uh, filter out hatches, filter out text. Okay. So it's got a lot of got a lot of uh, you know, different functionality in that. So so you can um, you compare and interrogate the drawing um, in a more orderly fashion. If you've ever worked with uh, Autolisp, okay, um, or if you've got a lot of Autolisp uh, sort of uh, routines, uh, you can now 
edit it in Microsoft Visual Studio. So, so you can create and modify them, um, and it does it autocomplete from your, your Microsoft Visual Studio as well. Um, you know, you can format all or selected code statements. You can add watches and breakpoints and, you know, while debugging. So, so I haven't worked a lot with Autolist, but, you know, if you do, then, you know, there is, they have started including functionality into, you know, sort of VB so that you can, um, so that, or Visual Studio, sorry, so that you can you start e editing. Because, uh, you know, a lot of, I know as, as, you know, you've come through the AutoCAD ages, um, you know, the coding, well, Things have changed in AutoCAD where you've had to either redo your list routines and in editing it wasn't fun. So they're making it more uh, user friendly over here. Then you've got AutoCAD Mobile. Okay, so I said I was going to speak about AutoCAD Mobile um, and AutoCAD Web. So AutoCAD Mobile is, is an actual AutoCAD that sits on your Android device or your, your um, uh, Apple device. And, and what you can do with that, you can actually edit. You can draw lines, you can delete, um, you know, you can, you, you can modify it. So uh, they, they created these apps um, so that when you do go out into the field, if you do need to have the drawing with you, and then, for instance, okay, look, I know that I just have to move this line or just trim this line off of here or just draw, um, you know, these arcs, lines, and circles to represent a new feature or structure that's sitting on site. It will automatically then update uh, the drawing that you're working on back at the office or, you know, the, the, the drawing that someone else, you know, your colleague is working at, at the office. So they've just made this a little bit more, more user friendly with, you know, enhanced gesture support, gesture support. So, I mean, a lot of the apps that we do use today, you know, you take your finger, you, you know, zoom in, zoom in and out is, uh, you know, you know, splitting your finger apart to bring it towards together. Um, for Mac users, you know, there are some other, uh, gestures that, that are, are different or just specifically to Mac for your keyboard or your mouse track. Um, so, so that, you know, they've enhanced those. So, so as you can see there, pan and zoom. So when no command is in progress, drag with one or two fingers to pan. When a command is in progress, drawing with two fingers to pan and pinch or spread with two fingers to zoom. Okay? Selection, just tap on an object to select it. Uh, when a command is in progress, uh, requires you to select an object, you can drag one finger to create a window crossing selection. So you just drag it across the object, it'll select it. And then to escape, double tap with one finger to end the command or clear a selection. Okay. So, so you know, these do these enhanced gestures do allow you to work more quickly um, and get your work out a little bit faster. Okay, so just uh, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, just your AutoCAD mobile extended access. So, you know, ever since, you know, sort of COVID-19 is our shores, um, Autodesk has has put some programs into effect which are are, are, are free to use. So, so, for instance, your AutoCAD web app and your AutoCAD mobile are both free to use or free to access, sorry, I should say, until the 30th of June 2020. Um, I don't know if they're going to extend it afterwards, but uh, if you do go to the Autodesk website, um, they do have some some banners which will point you to the to the website with some frequently asked questions as well. Um, and you can go just take a look at your AutoCAD web app, AutoCAD mobile. Now, the AutoCAD web app and mobile does work with your A360 account. So once again, you need to have your Autodesk account username and password so that you are um, so that you know that you can access it and. Uh, to be able to access it both from maybe your AutoCAD uh, plus your, your AutoCAD mobile. Or if someone wants to send you a link to a drawing they've done, you can open it up with the AutoCAD mobile, um, this little app that you download, or the AutoCAD web app, so that you web app you actually access through a, an, an internet browser, um, and, then, and then you can start drawing or modifying that uh, so that whoever sent you the drawing can get those modifications and, and carry on with their drawing. Great, thank you very much. So, so that is the the presentation. Just uh, um, as you can see, you know, a lot of the the new stuff which which people might not know about is the advanced tool sets or the the uh, additional tool sets, um, and they have added some some functionality. That that functionality that they do add for AutoCAD and actually for all the new stuff in in any Autodesk products is put up on the idea station. So, if you go to the the idea stations for the products. Um, the ideas you put forward, if they get kudos or if they, you know, get a lot of thumbs up, Autodesk then takes a look at that and puts that into consideration for how they actually move forward uh, with the software. Great. Are there any questions? 
I see as a question from Khat, can all the AutoCAD specialized uh, software intelligently link to the other software in the AEC collection? Are you talking about the Revit software? Um, the, I'm just trying to think now, I, I don't think like for instance, AutoCAD, um, architecture, AutoCAD MEP, they, they wouldn't link to, uh, to like your Revit, for instance. Um, I think maybe if you put them into, to AutoCAD blocks, you could sort of bring it in um, as a model, but it wouldn't be intelligent. So I, I don't think so. But, um, uh, my colleague Paul and, and Charles will probably be better to, um, answer that. Um, I do on the manufacturing. I do know on the manufacturing side there is a, quite a lot of interoperability um, with with these specialized tool sets in the in the manufacturing product design and manufacturing collection. So, for instance, you know, as I said, your plant equipment can be used from inventor into plant, um, and then you know, plants can also be used in your Navis works. So that's that's another thing that you could take a look at. Your your Navis works is a um, you know that's a tool that can bring everything together. So, you know, whatever you're designing in anything in the collections, uh, Navisworks is kind of the, the one software package that's the glue. So that, uh, that will uh, be able to bring everything together over there. Advanced steel, okay. So, uh, yes, advanced steel, you can... Um, bring together with uh, with Plant 3D, um, so that does work. And I know that you can take, you know, if you do do any structural uh, components in most of the Autodesk products, you can take it out. I think uh, I don't know if it's XML or there's the, some format, but it actually there is a button. I remember seeing it. It says Export to Advanced Steel, and then you can now start, uh, you know, creating stuff with Advanced Steel. 3ds Max, um, of course. So any AutoCAD based project you can take. Uh, from you know from there into 3ds Max and you can start start working with it. Um, Revit, yeah, like I said, Revit, I'm I'm not too sure. I'd have to uh, to check for you. I hope that answers your question. Yes, layers does play a, a large role in the exports. It does, yes. So, um, yeah, make sure your layers are correct, and then at least then you can manipulate and control it much better in the 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 uh, the program that you are taking it uh, into. Great. If there are no more questions. Thank you very much. Thank you.